1976 Super Bowl is what made the girls, the one girl that did that wink into the camera. And after that, oh, we did movies, which we could not believe. We did uh, love boats, we did country westerns, we did everything, all the traveling world. And I think that any girl that misses being a cheerleader, she's missing a lot in life. The Silver Star Network presents the Dallas Cowboys Cheerleader Special with your host, Debbie Mappert. We're coming to you from the official headquarters of the Dallas Cowboy Cheerleaders, and this is their 2,500 square foot dance studio. You know, when growing up, many young women dream of becoming a cheerleader. But for some, not just any cheerleading squad will do. They want to join the best. In the next hour, we're going to give you a behind-the-scenes, in-depth look at the Dallas Cowboy cheerleaders. We're going to find out who they are, what it is they really do. But first, here's a look at how they became a national phenomenon. When admiring the Dallas Cowboys cheerleaders, you must remember their origin in order to appreciate their existence. For no other group has been so original, so special to their fans, where their presence was the mirror image of the team they cheered for. Though they were founded in 1970, it wasn't until 1976 when the cheerleaders found fame under the expertise of world-famous choreographer Taxi Waterman. I don't know whether the people really liked them at first because they call them go-go dancers. And then after, well, I guess a year or so, then they were just top-notch. I mean, when they would announce, and now the world-famous Dallas Cowboy cheerleaders, they just brought chill bumps all over you, and they would, you know, march out. It was just terrific. Among the first of cheerleader choreographers, Texi not only flavored the cheerleaders with the Texas style through the traditional uniforms, but enterprised dancing cheerleaders to the football field. It was fun learning uh, the techniques and watching Texi, who is a brilliant choreographer, uh, take steps that just popped in her mind in a split second and bring an entire uh, dance together the cheerleaders began displaying their works of art as they danced across Texas, and the whole perception of cheerleaders began to change. And even a celebrity status became a big part of football's more feminine side. Whenever we went anywhere, the crowds went wild. It was the neatest feeling. It was You were like a weekend star. You would go away and do a show, and the people would go crazy over you. You, you were glad to be where you were. It was, it was a nice feeling. But as the cheerleaders' popularity grew, their image on and off the field was that much more disciplined, and anyone who broke team rules was dismissed. We had to carry ourselves like ladies. It was a very strict organization, and that's basically what kept us on top. And part of staying on top meant looking the part in uniform. And though LaVita Kreger never suited up, she's fitted every girl who's ever performed and is partly responsible for just how good the uniforms fit. It's a fulfillment. I'm proud every time I look at it. In the first game, the first preseason game, I have to admit I don't see much of the game. I'm looking to see if every uniform fits right. For 14 years, Ms. Krager has sewn exclusively for the Cowboys cheerleaders. And while her work area may be far from a factory, it's just as famous as if only to her. I'm part of it. There, there's a lot of me down on the field, and I enjoy the games. It is terrific to go to all the games. So whether it's from the Texas touch of LaVita Krager or the teachings of Texie Waterman, these girls are the entrepreneurs of dancing NFL cheerleaders, which make the memories that much more special. Oh, it's definitely worth it. Uh, we rehearsed every night and it was growing, but the minute you step on the field and you start rooting for America's team, it is all worth it. It's wonderful. It's great. Movies, television, fame, and the cheerleaders when we come back. Uh, looking back on it, it was worth every bit of it. Uh, I think if we hadn't been paid anything, you know, that's, I would have 
still done it again. Uh, just all the experiences, all the people that I met, that I came in contact with, uh, the organization and the Dallas Cowboy organization itself. It was an honor to be a part of that and work along to, for their goal to be number one. And just to know that you were part of that and you put yourself into that and you helped to make it that way, that means the most to you. Every time that I'm coming down into the tunnel before a game, butterflies come to my stomach. It's just the, um, it's a wonderful feeling when our music starts and we're running out there and all the, the fans are screaming and it's, and it's never the same feeling. It's always different. It's, you know, something new to expect. Being a Dallas Cowboy cheerleader has made me grow as a person, um, made me work with other teammates to make a great, excellent squad. It's made me, um, responsible, a lot more responsible person, and um, I love performing for people and working as a team. And now here's a behind the scenes look at the Dallas Cowboy Cheerleaders locker room. Most people never get to see this. This is great. Here's Wendy Newman's locker, and look. Just what you expect to find, the uniform. And here's the pom-pom they actually use out in the field. You know, you get a real sense of tradition here. You also get a sense of all the hard work they put in. But you know that hard work pays off in many ways. Take a look. The Dallas Cowboy cheerleaders are not only cheerleaders, they're celebrities. They've appeared everywhere from the silver screen to the TV screen. One, two, three, four, show us what you're famous for. <laughs> the, the cheerleaders made at least one Harry heartbeat when they were guest stars on Harry and the Hendersons. We got to live like we were superstars for, you know, three days. It was a great experience. I hope I get the chance to do that again. That was definitely a neat experience. Um, it's a lot of hard work, a lot more hard work than you think. You know, you see all the actors and actresses, you think they're not doing anything, but it was definitely hard work. The cheerleaders are used to hard work. They're also used to being in the spotlight. They've appeared on the Jerry Lewis Telethon, with Donnie and Marie Osmond, with Bob Hope, Steve Allen, and even cruised on the love boat. Look on now as they strut their stuff for us. Perhaps you saw them featured on the Phil Donahue here, show. Dallas Cowboys cheerleader. My mother was proud. You know, it's my first big national TV spot. And dance, the stage was as big as this room. So small, there's seven of us. We were kicking each other. I mean, it was, there were palm trees behind us and we're, you know, you see the palm trees flying, you just crack it up laughing. Nearly 15 years ago, the cheerleaders made the Dallas Cowboy Cheerleaders movie. Vanessa Baker, who was on the squad for eight years, was in the picture. She says seeing the movie today brings back happy memories, but it makes her feel old. It's fun to look back at them now, sort of, be, uh, because you see yourself then and you wonder, did I look like that? Uh, and it's dated. You can look at the movies and tell that uh, they were taken in the 70s, but it's still fun. And a lot of times I'll go to work or I'll get with friends and they'll say, I saw you on television. And it's like, oh no, that wasn't me. You know, that really wasn't me. The Dallas Cowboy Cheerleaders movie was one of the most popular movies ever shown on television. But despite all the glamour and glitz, the cheerleaders are surprisingly humble. I look at Vanessa Baker, Von Seal Baker, and those women were my legends. You know, I got to meet them this year, my third year in the squad, and I'm a group leader, and I get to meet these women who have paved the way for me. And I was, I was crying, I was like, ah, I mean, it's actually them. So to think that maybe someday somebody will feel that way about me, you, you can't feel it. 
Now you can't do a special on the Dallas Cowboy cheerleaders without meeting their leader. So welcome Kelly McGonagall. Now what's your official title? Director. Director of the Dallas Cowboys Cheerleaders. So you have an incredible schedule yourself. Certainly. How many hours a day? I arrive about 9 o'clock and if I'm here for rehearsals I don't get home before midnight. How do you want the cheerleaders to be perceived? Now's your chance. <laughs> <laughs> well, there's no mistaking them that they're cheerleaders and they're dancers and there's some stereotypes that will always be a, you know, go along with that and there's nothing wrong with being a cheerleader. But these cheerleaders are special. They're dancers. They're intelligent, they have careers of their own, they go to school, their wives, their, their mothers, and um, they're an American woman with, with more than just pom-poms to be proud of. They have careers, we've had everything from doctors to lawyers to um, doctoral students, advertising people, I mean, they're really a, a real well-rounded woman. You know, and obviously being a cheerleader is very exciting, and I know you've got a lot of exciting things planned for 92. Talk us through some of the things. We have our, our charity things that we do in the Metroplex. We visit nursing homes and veterans hospitals. Exciting things that to the girls, they love to travel internationally. So you're going to Japan? We're going to Japan with the Cowboys for the American Bowl. We also, of course, do our USO tours. We do a Christmas tour and that lasts 22 days to Korea, the Philippines, Japan, the Indian Ocean. Uh, those are exciting. It gives the girls the opportunity to see the world, to entertain troops overseas. To, um, to do things like land on aircraft carriers and be catapulted off an aircraft carrier, the things that we see Tom Cruise do. Um, you know, that, that's real exciting for the cheerleaders. And you do a lot of things, like we work with corporations. Sure, we do corporate shows, conventions, and they're very glamorous, very... Um, these corporations spend a lot of money on the stages, the lights, the settings, and that may, that's a lot of fun for the performers as well, to have very captive audiences. Let's talk about the fantasy aspect of being a cheerleader because clearly the whole glamorous fantasy of being a cheerleader is what so many young girls dream of. Tell us about that. Is it all glamour? It's not all glamour, but there is some glamour and the glamour part is fun. Uh, you know, we may have an 18-year-old cheerleader or a 19-year-old cheerleader that just graduated from high school and all of a sudden she's thrown into uniform fittings and she's thrown into her first professional makeup session and she has professional photographs with the music and the wind blowing her hair and photographers coaching her and, and all of a sudden you feel like a Vogue model for a day and, and things like that that you normally wouldn't get as a cheerleader in high school and yeah, college. What's the best part about being a cheerleader? There's, there, I can't say there is one best part. Each, each girl really likes different things. We have some girls that are dancers at heart, so they love performing. Um, some girls really are touched by the moments spent in a nursing home. When they visit someone and find out it's a grandparent of someone they knew, or if it's a grandparent that never gets visited, and then someone, they start crying. There's some very tender, special moments that these girls see. If we're overseas and a 17-year-old soldier says, would you call my mom back home in Dallas? And we return home to Dallas and call his mother and she starts crying because we've told him she, he's just fine and he said hello and he said Merry Christmas. There's a lot of special memories. Um, I would say the friendships are very sincere and, and close to each girl's heart. They leave here friends. They, they come in not knowing each other and they leave here very close friends. They're in each other's weddings. They, um, we get more baby shower announcements than Huggies probably gets. <laughs> so it sounds like you have a lot of good times. We do. Okay, well, we're going to have more. Stay with us, because when we come back, Kelly and I are going to explore how the cheerleaders are actually chosen. Now you too can be a part of the excitement. Call today and become a member of the Dallas Cowboys Cheerleaders Fan Club. The Cowboys Cheerleaders are adored by fans from around the world. Join now and receive personally autographed pictures of your favorite cheerleaders, newsletters, special discounts on Dallas Cowboys Cheerleaders merchandise, and much more. For more information, call 556-9932. Being a cheerleader has done a lot for me emotionally, maturity-wise, I've learned very much. And when I look back and when I first made it for the squad, I've come so far maturity-wise. I've learned so much about myself and other people. And I now know how to approach anybody and not be nervous to talk to them and just warm up to people. And I've learned how to just finish things that I start and discipline myself. 
I get a great feeling of accomplishment. I mean, we put in a lot of hours working and practicing, and, and you think sometimes, oh my goodness, am I ever going to make it through the week? But it all pays off after a game, after a show. You feel everything you've worked for is paid off. Now I know that there are more than a brave few of you out there who dream of becoming a cheerleader, but there's only one thing holding you back, and that's fear. Fear of the audition, and Kelly, you're going to put their minds at rest. It's not that bad, is it? It's not that bad. It only takes a month. It takes a month, and there are a lot of, there are a lot of people that show up, but they're all in the same boat. They're all scared. When a girl arrives, she's it is scary. You think everyone in the room is beautiful, but the girl sitting next to you is just as nervous as you are, just as inexperienced at being a cheerleader as you are, and um, just as new. What's the first thing that happens? Take us through what, what they can expect and what the judges are looking for. Well, they will correspond with us through the mail by calling our office for an application packet, and we'll send them that. And that tells them everything they need to know. We even have suggestions in it as to how to wear their hair, what to wear, what to say, what to do. What are the judges looking for? What are the judges told? We have a judges meeting before auditions. Who judges? They'll be myself, our choreographer, Judy Trammell. We have radio personalities, TV personalities, hairdresser. We have uh, both men and women. And I want the judge as a panel to select cheerleaders that are attractive to them in their own way, because that is how our audience is. So give to me the speech that you give to the judges. In a nutshell, what do you tell them? Well, I want them, in your mind, you pick the girl who you think looks and acts and dances like a Dallas Cowboys cheerleader. Now, typically, the men pick the good-looking ones and may, may make a lot of uh, excuses for their dancing because that's how they perceive a Dallas Cowboys cheerleader. Our choreographer is going to be looking for dancing. I try to pick, you know, the complete, the whole picture. But um, what is a common thread amongst us all is if a cheerleader has, a, if she has a real sparkle in her when she's, when she's trying out, because she's sitting in a room full of competitors, and if she can get on our dance floor and sparkle and outshine the others, for whatever reasons, if it's her smile, if it's her hair, if it's her dancing, if it's her looks, if it's her personality. Okay. Anything else for those would-be hopefuls out there? Anything else you can tell us about that month-long process to help ease their minds? Anything else about what the judges are looking for or what they can expect to go through to relieve the fear? Because I know that there are young women out there who would love to be a cheerleader. It's their dream, but they're scared of this process and don't think they can make it. I would encourage everyone because I really think um, if your look is not right, a lot of times we see that and we're forgiving at auditions and we, we say, okay, if we change her hair or if we do this or do that, she'll, we can work on that. Um, if her dancing isn't perfect at auditions, we give them the benefit of doubt and we bring them into training camp and we teach them or at least we give them a chance. Kelly, <clears throat> advice to newcomers. Advice to newcomers would be to get the judge's attention. They have three chances to get our attention. At preliminaries, it's very short and sweet. They walk up, they say their name, and they dance for us. At semifinals, they have the opportunity to show us that they can learn the choreography that we teach them right there, and they execute it the same day. At finals, they have the, time, the chance to write me an essay, to take a test, and to bring their own two-minute talent presentation, be it singing, dancing, or magic act. So I would say in the whole big picture, to get our attention in whatever way you can, if it means show off, then show off. If it means kick high, then kick high. If it means show your dimples and smile, then smile. But convince us that you can entertain 65,000 people at Texas Stadium. Okay. Thank you, Kelly. Thank you. Hopes, dreams, expectations of hundreds of young women from across the country all ride on the month-long audition process. And here's a small slice of what their exciting and nervous life is like. Whether it's your first or fifth audition for the Dallas Cowboy Cheerleaders, you can bet each of the 2,000 plus ladies are filled with much more than energy, like the high hopes of fulfilling a lifelong dream or the fear of disappointment. But no matter what the outcome, making new friends is almost always a guarantee. It's really exciting. I mean, each year you meet new friends, new people. The experience that you go through is 
just it doesn't compare to anything else in the world. The second year, I made it to the top finals, so I was real close to training camp, and so I'm gonna just give it my best. So you go to that way, to this way. You just so you just do like this. I went in there. I didn't know anybody yeah. and everything, and now I'm going in. I know you know know a lot of the girls, and um, I know what to expect, and I know what they expect out of us. While judges look for those who are creative and coordinated, it's actually that special energy and charisma that defines a true Dallas Cowboy cheerleader. When they're, when they're auditioning to be a cheerleader, you want to get noticed. Whether it's just lots of pizzazz or smile, you know, you have the best smile out there or you dance with confidence and, and just look like you're having a lot of fun to where you can project in a stadium with 65,000 people, you want to get noticed. Now turn. Now you turn this way and you have to point your foot. You have to be a real team-oriented person to be a good cheerleader. You have to be able to um, be in front of a crowd and be comfortable because um, we do a lot of things like interviews like this and um, we perform a lot and uh, so you have to be real outgoing to, to be a good cheerleader. You keep your eye right there and wait till the very last minute Whip your head around and catch it again. With more interest this year than ever before, the competition can only get tougher. I look at auditions as a lot of beautiful young women coming in wanting the same thing. So it's, it's hard every year. The competition's rough. So I get nervous every year. And having a taste of the action for a season only makes them want it that much more. Oh, I think I'd be very disappointed because I know, I know what to expect now. And, um, and I, I feel like, I mean, I want to do it another year with all my heart because it's something I really want to do. But um, it would be a great disappointment because I know what I miss out on. Only training camp will tell the final 36, but until then, practice may make perfect. And if at first they don't succeed, Judy says, try, try again. It never hurts to try and try and try. We've had girls try four and five times before they ever made it. And it shows us that they really want it that bad. Stay with us as we actually find out what it's like to be a Dallas Cowboy cheerleader. Everybody does this for different reasons, but um, the performing and the just being on stage and, and seeing the USO, you know, being on the tours and stuff, and seeing the troops get so excited. Here we are at Christmas time, and they have nobody. They're away from home. That's the best. It makes you feel good. It makes you feel like you know, here I can sacrifice a Christmas or two or three, you know, to to bring a little bit of you know home to them, to the troops overseas. So it's nice. Once you've crossed over the hurdle of the auditions and made the team, then it's time for all those dreams to meet the reality of hard work. And that means giving it all you've got. Here's Stacy Jacobs with more. There's an exciting expression, a charming look, and a menu of dancing skills that define a Dallas Cowboys cheerleader. And while only 45 young, determined, and polished women debut at training camp in Austin, it's often the little girls inside that make it all possible. When I was five years old, my dad took me to a game, and I was like, oh, look at those girls down there. Look at what they're doing. And my dad goes, well, Glenn, honey, you can do that, too. One day you can do that if you work hard. And I said, boy, that's what I'm going to do. And so I just, I took dance lessons when I was little, and that's what I wanted to do. And now I'm here. And as enchanting as childhood dreams can be, the reality of hard work separates the dreamers from the ones who make it. They expect 100% um, of you as a person and of your time and of your commitment and of your efforts. Um, they can't afford to take anything less. Five and six and seven and eight. Practices may seem endless after a 9-to-5 workday. 6 a.m. Saturday rehearsals may limit weekend activities. 
And while one game's pay will only fill a tank of gas, any cheerleader will tell you it's an intriguing experience that enhances their chances for greater challenges. When I came to the cheerleaders, I was 19 years old and I'm now 22 and I've grown up so much, so much more than I think I would have if I wasn't a cheerleader. I've gained confidence in myself and in everything that I do. When I first auditioned, I was very plain. I never wore makeup. Um, I didn't wear heels. I was always scared of my height. I hated being tall because everybody made fun of me. And now it's a big deal to be tall. And that's given me a lot of confidence because I am tall. I'm the tallest member of the group. And it just given me a chance to just blossom into me. Becoming a Dallas Cowboys cheerleader is a Cinderella story for most all of these young professionals. And while they may all look the same in uniform, each develops their own image their rookie year that separates one from the other. I had a sandy blonde color, and it was great, but with 25 other blondes on the, <laughs> on the field, I thought Kelly um, suggested maybe that I look good because of my skin color and my dark brown eyes, that I'd look really good with auburn hair, and we did it, and it sure turned out great, I think. Well, I'm the only one on the squad with the ponytail, so when people ask me, how do I know it's you, I can say, well, look, I'm the one with the ponytail. So I like it. While each girl has her own hairstyle, talent, and personality, they all share a common feeling about what may be the most memorable venture during the life of a cheerleader. It has to be coming out of that tunnel when um, Murphy announces us. That is the most exciting thing about the whole game. I mean, the whole, the whole thing, because it just, it just shot of adrenaline goes through you when he says that. That's really exciting. And the crowd going crazy and everything, and it's, that's really neat. When we come back, the cheerleaders take the show on the road. I didn't audition for the cheerleaders until I was 25 years old. I had finished college and been involved in a college drill team, and um, I had taught school for three years and decided to be, become a cheerleader or audition in hopes of becoming a cheerleader. And um, maybe standing in the tunnel, I wasn't like an 18-year-old standing there, but I think I brought a little um, better understanding of what a special honor it was and what a special place it was. It's just a thrill. When, I, when you come out of that tunnel, I think from the time you're a rookie until well, now, three years later, I just get that same sensation in my stomach. And it's just a thrill when you look out at the crowd and you hear Murphy, our announcer, say his traditional line. You, you just get such a thrill and you, you walk out into that stadium and it never seems smaller. It always seems huge, even from the time I went there right after it was first built. I remember going to games as a child because I'm a little bit older than some of the cheerleaders at the Cotton Bowl. And then I remember the first time going to the Texas Stadium and um, I was young, but it seemed so huge and now it seems just as big to me. And when you walk out of the tunnel, it's, it's breathtaking. Remember a little earlier in the show when we looked at the audition process and each person had to bring a two-minute talent presentation? Well, there's a good reason for that because the cheerleaders have a full-scale professional show group that tours the world. Back behind me are just a few of the plaques they've received for their USO tours. Here's Vicki Hitzkus with more. Every year, hundreds and hundreds of girls try out to be Dallas Cowboy cheerleaders. Of those, only 36 make the squad. Then of those, only 16 make the cheerleader show group. The show group is a group that travels and the group that works the hardest. Whenever a company invites the cheerleaders to appear out of town, these are the girls who go. And every time they appear, they draw a crowd. Uh, lines start forming immediately even before they've had a chance to get into the uniforms and have the pictures out ready to sign. We'll have pictures, people, excuse me, waiting out in front for over an hour uh, just to get the first opportunity to get their autograph. This 
elite unit was created almost 20 years ago when the cheerleaders were invited to entertain troops overseas, and the cost of taking all the girls was prohibitive. Of all the exciting places and people they see, every year the highlight is their USO trip to entertain the troops overseas. It's a very rewarding experience. I mean, they are, they are an audience that yells, you know, just when the sight of seeing you, you know, not so much the performance, but it's, it was really gratifying on tour to give something back to, you know, the guys that give so much to our country. Happy New Year! The Korea tour is hectic. From early in the morning to late at night, every night, the USO tour means active duty. We, we wake up four or five o'clock in the morning. Sometimes the girls have breakfast in the room, sometimes they don't have time for that. We'll then take off in helicopters or Chinook or whatever type of transportation they have for us for the day and have breakfast with the troops in a mess hall. And then we wind the night up with our show, which is our variety show. And um, the shows are real exciting. They usually bring standing ovations and tears to both the audience and the performers. So they're real rewarding. Every little bit of reminder of home is special. And these girls, particularly because of their beauty and their talent and uh, I think most of all their positive attitude uh, are the highlight of a lot of people's tour in Korea. The cheerleaders travel from Korea where it's cold to Japan and the Philippines where it's hot. No matter where they travel, they're always met with a warm reception. Hey sugar, tell them all your name. You go out there and they're screaming at you because they haven't seen a girl in, in one to two years. In fact, it was one of the highlights of my life being a cheerleader because it was a great feeling serving our country. To some people, being a Dallas Cowboys cheerleader might seem to be a meaningless job. These soldiers don't agree. I just think that they're, they're beautiful girls. You know, and I'm not talking about their, their facial features or whatnot. They, they are just good people. And, uh, I am going to miss them. They're just lovely people. And uh, they love the country. And they appreciate the soldiers who are here. They're good ladies. As you've seen so far, a tremendous amount of singing and dancing goes into being a cheerleader. And Judy Trammell is the choreographer behind the dancing. But you're also a Dallas cheerleader yourself, or a former cheerleader. Yes, I was a cheerleader for four years, from 80 to 84. Now, some of the cheerleaders, I think, are become more famous or more recognizable. And so rumor has it that you're one of the more famous ones. Well, I hate to say that everyone's famous in their own way. Once they put on that uniform for the weekend, you become an instant celebrity. But it's fun for the girls when they go out shopping or out to eat and someone does notice them and recognize them and say, aren't you a Dallas Cowboy cheerleader? That must be fun. It is fun. Was it a tough transition to go from being a cheerleader to a choreographer? It was different. I had a, my last year as a cheerleader, I knew that this was a possibility that they wanted to hire me as an assistant choreographer for that year. And I had tremendous support from my rookies and the other veterans that were cheerleaders with me. So. So it there, helped being a cheerleader? Oh yes, it helped because I understood the problems, the hard work, the when they got tired, when they needed water on the field, and, and I could always say, I know they're tired now, we better stop and give them a break. I was just there, so it really helped. How do you get them to where they need to be? Just, we practice all summer, five nights a week during the summer, Beep, just like the, the Cowboys start their training camp, ours mm -hmm. starts in May, and it lasts through the first game, and, and they just have so much to learn those first few months. When you were a cheerleader, what was the most rewarding part of being a cheerleader? Oh, there's, there's so many to talk about. Um, the children are always fun because they look up at you with your, their big eyes and they just get so excited to see you in your uniform. They want to shake your palms and, and just going to the children's orphanages. We visit Buckner's every year and they are so special. They, they just cherish and you can do one little routine and they're, they're so excited to have you there. And, we do telethons for the Handicapped Children Variety Club telethons, and that's really exciting. I remember having a little boy that he's written me since my first telethon with him, and uh, he walked across the stage for his first time to me on TV, and that was so special. So you were, you were a big influence on a lot of young women, a lot of young people. I hope so. I think that's 
something that we all strive to do. If we can give positive influence to anyone, that's great. Well, we have a clip of one young woman whose life you greatly influenced. Watch this. When I was about 14, I think, as a freshman in high school, I had been going to the games, and then all of a sudden, I remember one game, I looked down and saw this one particular cheerleader with long, blonde, curly hair, and I remember it hit me. I wanted to be just like her. And for her, I believe it was four years that she cheered, I watched her at every game that I went, and now that lady, Judy Trammell, is my choreographer. So I, I can remember the first time I met Judy Trammell, I was so nervous because she didn't know that I was this goofy little 14-year-old who had been watching her forever. But um, it, it was so exciting, and, and it still is to me, to be able to, to come to practice every night and learn from what was and, and really still is in, in some aspects my idol. So Judy, how does that make you feel? Oh, that's unreal that you can influence someone's life that much and want them to do the same thing that you've done. It gives, it gives you a great feeling. So just think of all the lives out there that the cheerleaders have impacted on. And that's true. And, that, and they're, they're special young women. They are so special in everything they do. And they learn and grow. And, and I hope they take their year as a cheerleader because it's going to be over so fast and take that year and try to touch as many people as they can. Judy, thank you for joining us. Thank you. And now, stay with us because when we come back, we're gonna see the cheerleaders like you've never seen them before. Um, I got a lot out of it. I was 18 the first year that I was a cheerleader, so it helped me to grow up a lot, become independent, learn to work with people really well. Um, there's, I can't, I go on and on about all that. I, I grew up so much in three years. I'm still proud to be a, Dow, a former Dallas Cowboy cheerleader. It's a nice feeling. The Dallas Cowboys cheerleaders can make your next corporate function or special occasion a memorable one. Call 556-9932 and make your next event a hit. A good Dallas Cowboys cheerleader comes from the heart. Um, we have so many responsibilities. It's not just looking good or dancing well. It's loving what you do. It's loving your community, loving the Cowboys. You know, it takes a lot more than just wanting to put that uniform on. you got to go sweat for four hours at a football game. And that's not fun. It looks like fun, but you know. Um, that and just giving. A girl has to be able to give. Uh, once you become a veteran, you have to turn around and help other girls become good cheerleaders because everybody comes in with these preconceived notions of what we're all about. And you know, oh, we're, we're snobs or we're this or we're that. And, um, we're, and you have to be a little humble. So far, you've seen the glamour and the excitement of being a cheerleader, but here's a touching side you may not have seen before. Some people never get too old to enjoy seeing the Dallas Cowboy cheerleaders, or too old to want to give one of them a hug. The cheerleaders visit nursing homes and hospitals every year to smile, sign autographs, and give out cheerleader photographs. You got a problem, you'll get out of here soon, though. Although, some folks seem to enjoy these photos more than others. Here at the VA hospital, on the other hand, having your picture made with the Dallas Cowboy cheerleaders is definitely a treat. <laughs> definitely. Well, we take great pride in doing these things, and this is great for us. We love to come here and try to get these people feeling a little better, make them feel like... It's more than just a normal day here. Can I have a hug? Yeah. Can I have a big hug? <laughs> yeah. All right. All of the attention, the glamour, the smiles, the handshakes and hugs are good for the nursing home residents and veterans. Everywhere the cheerleaders go, they seem to bring a little healing love. A lot of our veterans uh, don't have close family uh, 
or don't have anybody close by in the in the Dallas area, and so visitations are slim sometimes for them. And so when cheerleaders come out, it really perks them up, and it's great. It's just great. The residents adore the cheerleaders. The gentlemen, of course, especially enjoy the cheerleaders, but all the ladies enjoy them too. They've always been very gracious. They're uh, always very sweet and nice uh, and love visiting with the residents. In addition to the special attention, veterans also get some cheerleading tips. We kind of wiggle back and forth sometimes. Do you? Oh, yeah. You think that helps? The visits not only benefit the residents and patients, they're good for the cheerleaders, too. It's a wonderful feeling. You know, I don't have, my grandparents are gone, and, you know, some of these people don't have any families, so, you know, it's the best thing they can get. Uh -huh. Hi, how are you? Sure, it gives the patients here a lot of feeling that somebody cares besides itself and besides God. All right. All right. All right. Uh, what was your first name? My name's Bill. Bill. Bill, there it is, right there. Thank man. you. You guys made my day. Yeah. I'm just going to bring You're going to smile. Okay. Put my teeth out in the front, so you know how that is. Right. <laughs> As important as medicine and therapy is to these patients, sometimes the best medicine of all is knowing someone cares. Stay with us. When we come back, watch the cheerleaders come to life. To be a good Dallas Cowboys cheerleader, you have to always set the example, um, especially coming back your third year, to make sure that you're always on time, that you're always putting out the 150% so that the rookies and you know, the, the girls that are under you, you know, can have a, a, a role to follow or a role model to follow. Being a Dallas Cowboys cheerleader, I've gained a lot of attributes. I've learned self-discipline, learned time management. Um, I've learned how to get along with people and be a part of a team and um, try to set good examples for people that follow. Well, now you know a little about what it's like to be a Dallas Cowboys cheerleader. And by the way, if any of you out there want to make this year's auditions, just go by your nearest J.C. Penney for an application. Wherever you see this life-size poster of one of the cheerleaders, that's where the application will be. Or you can just give them a phone call at 556-9932. I'm Debbie Maffitt. Thank you for joining us. But before we say goodbye, let's take one more look at the Dallas Cowboys cheerleaders. Ladies with an attitude, fellas that were in the mood. Don't just stand there, let's get to it. Strike a pose, there's nothing to it.